right, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Airbus 320 Tech Talk. What do all those buttons do? Thank you again so much for joining me. The topic of today's session is going to be the APU Synoptic page on the A320 flight deck. Uh, if you've been following along as we've stepped through the progression the last couple of videos, this is just the next one in that series there. But before we get started, as always, if you like what you're hearing and seeing, please go ahead and hit that like button. Hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, leave comments down below, all that kind of good stuff. It just helps me keep this channel moving forward and hopefully keeps this fun, engaging, and exciting for everybody that's watching out there. So thank you so much if you've already done so. We'll go ahead and jump into the topic of discussion, as I said, that I've got for you today. So um, the next screen we've got to talk about, as I mentioned, is the APU screen here, the auxiliary power unit. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, just very basically, there's a, a really small jet engine situated in the back of the aircraft that serves the purpose of, you know, just as the name implies, being an, an auxiliary source of both electrical power and bleed, uh, bleed air to, you know, power the various systems in the airplane that we need to, uh, to get powered when the, end, the main engines, anyways, are not running. So if you want a little bit more detail, go back and watch the presentation I did about the, uh, the APU start panel. We talked a little bit more in depth about all those things there. So you can go back and check that out. But... Um, as with uh, keeping in the tone of the last uh, you know, couple videos that I made here, as, as far as just these screens are concerned, I wanted to kind of keep things basic and just tell you specifically what the indications mean and what they're there for and all that kind of good stuff. So we'll go ahead and uh, take a look at the screen here. This is as we would see the screen when the APU is just completely shut down. So there's no power going to it. It's not doing anything for us. We just see here the, the EGT indication and the, the N percentage or uh, you know the rotation speed anyways and percent. Uh, output, let's say the, the APU engine back there. Just both of these indications are showing amber X's, and that just means there's no data to display there. It's not detecting anything. Really, the, the APU is just in the off position uh, when we're looking at this, um, you know, sort of um, presentation here of, the, of the, uh, the data or what have you. And of course, you'll see an absence of the APU gen symbology here, and the, the bleed uh, pressure is, um, is showing nothing. We're, we can also see that the APU bleed. Uh, the valve itself is closed here as indicated just by the, the horizontal positioning of the little circular icon here that we have. So uh, if we were to start the APU, remember we just go up in the overhead panel there, we, we turn the APU on first, and then we hit the start switch and everything is, you know, does it does its own thing automatically. We're, we're going to see something uh, that looks like this. So this is the what the screen looks like essentially after the APU comes up to full power and comes online and all this good stuff. But you know, if you're watching this, um, the APU actually start, it's kind of neat. You'll see the, um, you know, the N uh, percentage start to spin up as the, the APU accelerates and the EGT, of course, uh, climbs as well as the, the unit's getting hot back there. And of course, the, the flap open indication pops up here. Remember that the, this flap open um, icon here, or the, or the wording rather, just um, tells us the positioning of that, the intake flap. Remember that's on the bottom side of the, the, um, the rear tail section of the airplane there. That's just where the APU is, is drawing the, the outside air in to power itself or, or to process rather, let's say. So uh, up from there, on the left-hand side here, we just have the APU gen uh, box that, that pops up. So it, it, it's kind of interesting here. One thing to point out as well, um, at this point in time, it, it's um, you know, pretty apparent just by looking at this, but if you didn't have prior or deeper system knowledge, you know, this might be a little confusing. You, you look up and you see that the APU gen showing a 0% on the load readout here. And that's, of course, because, you know, the, the APU is actually up and running and online, but in this case, we're using external power to power all the, you know, the electrical components in the airplane at this point in time. And this is, you know, a typical configuration we'll see if we, you know, we want to, you know, stay on the, the jetway power or the ground power for any reason and just use the APU uh, bleed source to get air conditioning, uh, you know, cool air, uh, specifically into the back of the airplane. It will we'll kind of run in this this configuration for various periods of time, you know, depending on where we're at and you know whatever else is going on outside the airplane. It's it is a possibility, so that might be a little confusing upon first glance at this, let's say. But down below that, you know, we see the the voltage output and the frequency, of course, are showing green and normal. So the now basically, the APU generator is making good power. It's just not doing anything for you in this instant here. So that is what that tells us there. And of course, over onto the right, um, one more thing also to point out before we move off that, that just the, the green avail light here just shows that the generator is available for usage. So, uh, you know, you could you know, switch over from the, the external source in this case and you would have, uh, the, the plane's basically telling you that you have adequate good power uh, required to, to power all the electrical systems in the airplane. So 
Moving from the right, uh, or I'm sorry, to the right, of course, we see the, the bleed uh, status here. So we're just putting out 30 PSI uh, worth of bleed air. And of course, the valve is now open and the little green triangle just tells us that uh, the air is flowing out into the portions of the system that need it. So pretty simple, straightforward stuff there. Um, I have a few more slides that I wanted to show you guys because of course when the APU is up and running, there are certainly other portions of systems that are using the resources like we said from, from the APU. And uh, Abby, if you're still watching this video, he had asked a question um, uh, you know, a few, few uh, segments uh, uh, back uh, just about uh, the fact that um, the, the APU icon seemed to disappear on one of the pages. And you know, specifically the reason for that is you know, the Airbus being really smart and really you know, easy on us as pilots is it, it's just a way of decluttering the screen so that sometimes you, know, you may not see certain indications if the, you know, the APU, for example, is just not up and running and doing anything for you at all. They've just to chosen to like remove that indication altogether. It just makes it easy to you know, let you know as a pilot that, um, you know, that, that option's not there for you, whatever system uh, might be affected. But you know, specifically regard, with regard to the APU, once again, let's just kind of step through a few of the slides here. So this is on the bleed page here. We can see a couple things. Of course, the engines are shut down in this uh, instance. We're just sitting at the gate, but you know the APU is running. The APU bleed valve is open. The cross bleed valve is also open. And you can see that the air is just flowing up, and it's you know just by the the green coloring that just tells us that everything is flowing normally through there. And you can see the air is making its way out of the packs, and they're doing their thing. They're providing the air conditioning for the airplane in this case. So that's what that page is telling us there. Uh, we'll scroll through. I uh, already looked at that one. Um, let's see, I think that was the same slide. On the electrical page here, um, kind of backing up or, or reiterating essentially what I said in the beginning part of the presentation there where the APU gen, yes, it is here. It's part of the electrical picture of all that's going on with the airplane at this point in time. But once again, the APU gen is not doing anything for us. So there's no load on it as, as uh, evidenced here by the 0% readout there. And of course the, the external power, like we said, is doing the whole job of providing all the power to the airplane. Uh, at this point in time. So that's what that means. And um, oh yeah, one other little one uh, that I wanted to show you guys is remember, um, I think it was uh, maybe just one or two uh, segments prior, we had talked a little bit about the APU fuel pump. And this, of course, backs up what I was telling you there, you know, when there's, there's no pumps on on the left side of the airplane, uh, the APU pump comes on automatically and it's able to draw the fuel out of these tanks here and uh, of course route it out to the APU so it can burn it and uh, do what it does there. So that's all that means. And uh, let's see, that's, that's about it. all that I have for you guys as far as the symbology that we see on that APU synoptic page there. And uh, we'll just jump into the next slide here. So uh, with that being said, uh, if you guys have any questions about all that, please leave them down in the comment section down below. I'll do my best to field those for you. But uh, for the Q&A section today, I had a viewer write in. So um, Oni Vids or Oni Vids, um, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your, your screen name there per, uh, correctly or not. But um, this viewer had written in with a question uh, in he wanted to know what is the amount of imbalance re required to perform uh, cross feeding. So what he was talking about was in the, the video, we talked about the fuel a little bit more. We, we talked about these instances where you have various points in time where for whatever reason, the fuel in the left side of the airplane, you know, might be a little more or less than the fuel on the right side of the airplane. So we have a way that we as you know, pilots, like when we're flying around, we can actually balance the fuel out. And once again, his question specifically is just saying like, well, you know, what are the limits and how exactly you know, like when you need to, you know, perform this cross feed operation? It's a good question. And I'll tell you right off the bat, there is a, uh, there's a very technical and difficult answer. And I'm going to kind of go over that and, and explain a few of those things. But then there's a very simple and more specifically a real world answer that I can give you that's just more applicable to the actual way that we actually do things when we're operating the airplane. So I wanted to you know, kind of explain both elements of that. But so the slide that I've pulled up here, this is right out of the, the FCOM. So there's a section in there, uh, a whole limitations section that tells us about all the, the various limitations for all the systems in the airplane. Of course, when you go down to the fuel section, um, there is a portion there that talks specifically about the imbalance that is allowed uh, from side to side. And, and the interesting thing here, and the reason why I say that it, 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 it's actually somewhat more of a technical uh, explanation, let's say, is because uh, the, it actually varies. It depends, if, you know, first of all, what variant of the A320 you're, you're on, how much fuel is in the outer tanks, are you taking off, are you landing? 
um, how much fuel specifically is in each tank, you know, in, in each given scenario. And there's there's a few numbers that they, they throw down in the paper here. So we, of course, we look at this table if we really wanted to dial down and figure out, you know, what exactly is the maximum allowable and balance for any point in time. And so they just kind of give you a few data points here. And if you were, you know, you could pause the video and, and digest this slide a little bit more. I don't want to spend too much time on it. But if you just, you look at a few of these data points, like we said here, um, depending on where you were in relation to that, you might have to do a little bit of interpolation to kind of figure out if you were somewhere in between these numbers, you know, where is this lining up? And they even put a note down here that the, the variation is linear between these values. So it's, you know, of course, a, a straight slope, let's say, uh, if you were to look at a graph of, you know, what, what all these numbers are, are conveying to you essentially. But, you know, what you'll see here as you read through here is, I mean, it, it, you can actually have like a pretty substantial imbalance, which kind of surprised me when I first the learned the airplane. I mean, you, you can go up to a few thousand pounds worth of imbalance depending on where you are and which airplane you're in specifically for the day. So um, I hope that provides the, the technical explanation that you're looking for. But like I said, um, the, the real world thing that, you know, sticks with all of us as pilots is when, when we go through uh, ground school, you know, we're tasked with memorizing certain things and they have us memorize like the most restrictive uh, imbalance allowed for takeoff, and the most restrictive imbalance allowed for landing and, and uh, airborne operations. And, you know, the, the thing we do is we, we just kind of jump, you know, instinctively down to the most restrictive value uh, in our brain. So what that number works out to be is about 800 pounds. So that's kind of the magic buzz number, I would say, that's in most, you know, line pilots, like operational brains. is like when you start to see an imbalance of 800 uh, pounds, you know, you'll, you'll reach up and you'll intervene and you'll, you'll, um, You'll balance out the fuel, the crossfeed operation, and uh, get yourself back into a nice, you know, balanced sort of uh, sort of fuel situation between the left and right sides there. So, uh, and you know, the other funny thing I'll tell you guys about, you know, probably most of you, if you're aspiring pilots, or even if you are a flight sim person, or anybody involved in aviation, I mean, you know, you know, pilots can be a little bit fidgety, or or, or more specifically, they're they're kind of perfectionists. They're like these type A people a lot of the time. So, like, you know, they they get just, you know. Uh, things like catch their attention when they're like a little out of whack or a little out of balance or a little out of, you know, source in any, any way, shape or form. So a lot of guys will, you know, they'll notice an imbalance, you know, once it's gone like one or 200 pounds, you know, in the, uh, you know, either the left or right direction and they'll, they'll reach up and intervene. They want to keep everything all nice and smooth and, and even. It's just kind of the, the nature, I think, of the general <laughs> types of people that are out there flying these airplanes. So kind of a one little funny thing to end up uh, that discussion with for you guys. So that is all that I've got for you all tonight. Um, I hope everybody is staying healthy and safe. Of course, we're still in full swing with the coronavirus uh, this week here. I am in San Diego uh, tonight, and uh, our flights have just been super light loads. I mean, I think the, the most amount of people I've seen on one of my airplanes the last couple of weeks has been about 10 people, and uh, it's just a very interesting time uh, in the industry. So as a side note, if anybody has any questions about uh, just general stuff with all of, all of uh, that stuff and, and how it concerns us all, um, you can leave those questions down in the, in the comment section as well, and I'll do my best to field those. So hope everybody's having a great night. We'll talk again real soon. Thank you again. Good night.